An exclusive interview with the parents of Kaylin Gillis. The story of Kaylin shocked and saddened the entire capital region and country. She was tragically killed while turning around in a driveway last year. Now, for the first time, Kaylin's parents are speaking in an on camera one on one interview exclusively to Sabrina Dunn. It was April 15th, 2023, 9.45 p.m. A group looking for a friend's house gets lost. They pull into a driveway on Patterson Hill Road in the town of Hebron, Washington County. And as they start to turn around, tragedy hits. The homeowner, Kevin Monahan, fires two shots from a shotgun at the group, and one of those bullets kills Kaylin Gillis, a vibrant 20-year-old young woman from Schuylerville. Custody of the New York State Department of Corrections for service of your sentence. Monahan was found guilty of murder and is serving 26 years to life in prison. After the tragedy, the Gillises moved to Florida. It was Kaylin's favorite spot, and they have graciously invited us to come and meet them at their new home. We're here at Albany Airport about to take off for that flight. That the sun and the warmth. Oh yeah, yeah it's nice. It's... It really does help with the mood. We meet Kaylin's parents, Andy and Angel Gillis, at their home in Southwest Florida. We came down to visit a couple times and she really fell in love with the area. So it's only a matter of time yeah, right. before you, you probably ended up here anyway. Yeah. She also wanted to um, pursue college down here and she was really big into like ocean life, marine biology. She was something she always talked about. Being here now for, for nearly a year, um, how has that helped in everything that you have as a family gone through? Um, relocating, but also being in a spot where you know she yeah. would have wanted to be. How has that helped you? You definitely feel her down here. Like, we all talk about it, whether it be like just a random butterfly or something like that. It's just you, you feel her all around you all the time. Yeah, and can't help but remember all the, the good times we had when she was down here. You know, when we go out to eat and stuff, we'll go to restaurants that she went with us before. And, you know, it just brings back good memories, you know. We've heard, as I said, from so many people about Kaylin and all of her qualities, um, how beautiful she was, how loyal and giving, um, but nobody knows her more than, than you, her parents. She was um, spunky, is the yeah. best word to put it. She loved to make everybody around her laugh, oh, yeah. um, really family, always in the family. Angel and Andy Gillis invite us into their new home in Southwest Florida. They moved here after Kaylin's tragic death. This is where Kaylin always wanted to be. You definitely feel her down here. Like, we all talk about it. There is some level of peace for them here as they share more about their precious daughter, who would now be 21 years old, the oldest of three girls. She was funny. She was a really, really funny kid. She had a very old soul, we used to say, because she was just very, you know, there'd be kids playing and she'd want to be right over there where the adults were at all times, so oh, thank you. They talk about Kaylin's love for all things Disney, her innate artistic ability. Mom Angel has a tattoo of one of Kaylin's drawings. Stitch was Kaylin's favorite. Yes, yeah, uh, life imitates art in the same spot as you have it. And family for Kaylin was everything. The Sundays was always a family day. Always family day. Yeah, we'd always go to my mom's house and have Sunday dinner and she would never miss it. It didn't matter what she was doing, she was always there, even when she got older. Mimi, right? Yes, Mimi. Mimi. Yeah. Sunday dinners at Mimi's. Yeah. Absolutely. Kaylin was fiercely loyal and protective of her younger sisters, her friends, and her classmates. Is there a, a moment that comes to mind with a, with a um, classmate or even just yeah, with she, you? She had a really good friend growing up in Greenwich who um, had some you know, difficulties and she used to get made fun of a lot in school and Kaylin would be her, like her protector, her bodyguard. She'd make sure nobody messed with her. We actually got the pleasure of seeing her at Kaylin's wake and she just, she said that was like the biggest um, impact on her was how strong Kaylin always was for her. Where do you think that came from for her? Um, when she was younger, she was attacked by a dog and she was in the hospital for like a week and a half, two weeks. Mm -hmm. How old was she when that happened? Um, seven. Seven years old. Oh yeah. my gosh, wow. Yeah. yeah, we actually almost lost her then. Um, yeah, it was, it was a 
pretty bad attack. The recovery from that, people commenting on the marks and scars, turned into strength for Kaylin. She used that as fuel to, mm -hmm. to become the person that she, she was. When we told her that the dog had been put down, she cried. Even though the dog put her through so much horror, she felt so bad that the dog had to be put to sleep. And even after all that, she never lost her love for dogs. That strength, that compassion, that was Kaylin Gillis. It kind of made everybody really happy to have her around. Angel and Andy Gillis take solace in the Florida heat and sunshine, a place where their daughter Kaylin always wanted to be. You had a very special relationship with her. I think you've mentioned that you guys were almost like best friends. Yeah, right. We were. Yeah, we. She would talk. We would talk about everything. No matter what was going on, Kaylin would reach out to her mom. Did you find yourself doing the same? Almost I did. Asking her. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then I'd be like, Am I supposed to be asking my sixteen-year-old daughter about stuff? <laughs> Murder in the second degree. How does the jury find the defendant? Guilty. At the sentencing of the man who killed Kaylin, Andy Gillis finally had the chance to speak in his victim impact statement. Does that help to to actually say that in that kind of setting? Absolutely. Um, I I wanted to say those things to, especially Kevin Monaghan. I, I wanted to let him know how it deeply impacted us, all of us, and, you know. And to look him in the eyes and, and say. And to look him in the eye, correct, yeah. But there's so much more both yeah, Andy and Angel want to say. If you could say something to, to him, what would you say? I would just tell him that he's an awful person. Um, it's one thing to, to make a mistake and then own up to it, but this was clearly calculated um, he spoke about it even before it happened, um, about what is going to happen when somebody comes on his property again because he was getting sick of it, he said. Both were hoping for, at the very least, some sort of an apology from Kevin Monaghan before he was sent away to prison. He was given an opportunity to say something in court. No, thank you, Your Honor. And he did not. No matter what the anger was that I had inside, just knowing Kaylin and her level of forgiving people, I was willing to listen to him if he just apologized, just said something and to show some sort of remorse. When the judge asked him if he had anything to say, he said no. And no matter how hard I wanted to follow in her footsteps, I couldn't, I would never, I could never forgive or forget what he did to her and what he took from us and what he took from my girls, my family, nothing. But there was a little piece of you that was was willing to, had he actually yeah. taken that step, seeing a sort some sort of humanity in him would have that this affected him in yeah, some way would have given me a little bit of steps towards possible forgiveness. And I think we all half expected him to maybe say something, but didn't come. What we mean for her. She liked to go through the picture albums all the time. As the Gillises try to carry on, they're not doing it alone. They have the support of their big family, both in Florida and in the Capital Region, and thousands and thousands of people from all over the country and the world. What can people do to, to be like Kaylin? Try to be as generous and kind as you possibly can to one another, because that's how she lived. Angel and Andy Gillis show us the artwork created by Kaylin and also pieces created by her younger sisters inspired by Kaylin. The two big canvases are hers. The picture of Benny was her. She was big into photography in her senior year. Pictures of their precious girl bring them joy. Say real. Seeing smile. Oh yeah. It's one picture I really love. My father was like lifting her up in the air and I just happened to catch. This blanket created by Kaylin's close friend, Angel wraps it around her to feel close to her oldest daughter. Um, it's full of different memories. I don't let anybody touch this blanket. <laughs> All this helps a little when reminders of that awful night enter their minds.
It was April 15th, 2023. Kaylin and a group of friends got lost. She was with her boyfriend, Blake, and one of her best friends, Alex. They turned around in a driveway in Washington County, and that's when the man who owns that home fired two shots. One of those bullets killed Kaylin. He didn't know these kids, and they didn't know him. That man's name is Kevin Monahan. He was convicted of murder and is serving 26 years to life in prison. How did both of you find out that night what had happened? Um, I got the phone call. Um, we had gotten a call from Blake's cell phone, and it was Alex on the other line, and she just said, I don't know how to tell you this. She said, but Kaylin's been shot. And I'm like, what do you mean? We were watching a movie, and I jumped up and started getting dressed. I didn't even tell him at first what was being said on the phone. I was just in a panic. We raced towards the area. But they could not see Kaylin. We actually could not pass. Um, they had the road blocked um, because it was a, a crime scene. They would not let us through, so we had to wait for quite a while. And then we were re redirected to the, um, the substation in Salem. So you, this whole time, didn't know what happened, didn't know, right? Right, right. Yeah, we didn't know the yeah, uh, they wouldn't tell us any the specifics details. of it. They waited for what felt like hours until they were informed Kaylin was gone. Uh, were you able to see her? No. Right no. away? No. I'm so sorry. Thank you. That was at the wake. Yes. We saw her again. Mm -hmm. For the first time. For the, the first, first time. time yeah. When thoughts of that terrible night creep in, the Gillises find comfort knowing Kaylin is with Andy's dad, her grandfather, Poppy, whom she loved dearly. And they see signs of Kaylin's angel number everywhere, 444. I'm like, wow, I'm like, I know you're here. And when faced with a challenge. Do you catch yourselves, you know, having moments where you, you say, you know, what would Kaylin do? Or what oh, all, all the time. time. All the all time. The time. <laughs> 